Hey, welcome to Robinson Foundry. This is a model called the Three Wise Skulls. This is a 3D print of that model. And this, this is, this is a solid bronze statue that I made using a 3D print just like it. Stick around and I'll show you the whole process of how I made it. The first step was to 3D print the model at a very high resolution in a plastic called PLA. PLA has a low melting point and it can be burned away without leaving any ash behind, which makes it great for this process. I also printed this cone-shaped sprue. It'll act as a funnel, helping me to pour in the metal, and it will also feed the casting as the molten metal solidifies and shrinks. I glued the two pieces together with some super glue, and then I stared at it and encouraged it to dry faster. That didn't work. The next step was to dip the entire model into this goopy yellow stuff called suspended slurry. This stuff is essentially a liquid ceramic that's applied in layers in order to build up a thick shell. In between each layer, and while the slurry was still wet, I sprinkled on some silica sand, which helped build up thicker layers. Nine coats later, and the shell was ready for the next step, which was to melt out all of the PLA plastic in a kiln. First I had to slowly bring up the temperature in the kiln to the melting point of the PLA. But as usual, the ceramic shell cracked in a few places as soon as the temperature rose to a couple hundred degrees Fahrenheit. This actually isn't a big deal, because I've figured out that a great way to seal the cracks is to brush on some slurry while the shell is still relatively hot. This way, the slurry dries almost instantly, allowing me to quickly build up thick patches. Once the cracks were fixed, I placed the shell back into the kiln and heated it up until the PLA melted out. At this point, I was able to remove the vast majority of the plastic instead of just burning it away. Then I cranked up the temperature to around 1500 degrees Fahrenheit. This vitrified the shell, turning it into a ceramic which can withstand the temperature of molten bronze. While the shell was heating up, I loaded up my crucible with some bronze scrap and then fired up my homemade cake furnace. And that's keg furnace, not cake furnace. Some people have actually asked me for clarification about that in the past. You could actually put a cake in there, I guess. I let the bronze heat up to about 2000 degrees Fahrenheit and then pulled the ridiculously hot shell out of the kiln and placed it inside an old crucible. You could see that the ceramic is so hot that it instantly burns my leather gloves when I touch it. The sand is there to hold the shell steady during the pour and it helps prevent any potential leaks. I carefully removed the crucible and poured in the bronze as quickly as possible. I love how this sounds like a glass of milk being poured. A delicious 2000 degree glass of milk. I let the casting cool down for a while and then submerged it in water to cool it down enough to be handled.
Next, I went to work breaking off the ceramic shell. This is always a really exciting part of the process, but removing the shell is a major pain in the I can only get so far with a hammer. The best way to remove the shell is to use a powerful pressure washer followed by a sandblaster. Well, as you can see, this casting turned out great. Now all I have to do is cut off the sprue and clean it up. Meet my new metal cutting bandsaw. Many of you recommended purchasing one of these, and I finally did. This thing is awesome. It made quick work of cutting right through the sprue. I used an angle grinder to clean up the base and then went to work on the finishing touches. I didn't have very much finish work on this casting because it looked so good to begin with, but I did use my die grinder with an abrasive wheel followed by a wire brush. This polished look was definitely appealing to me, but I wanted a more contrasting look, so I used some liver of sulfur to darken the bronze. Once that was done, I used a product called Neverdull to remove some of the dark patina, and that really brought the statue to life. Or death, I guess, because skeletons. The final step was to use some clear coat to prevent the statue from tarnishing, and it was done. I'm always amazed by how well castings made using this process turn out. You can see all of the layer lines from the 3D print, as well as some individual strands of plastic under the chin. Those are less than half a millimeter thick, or about 20 thousandths of an inch. And for those of you who don't know, this statue is based on a Japanese maxim, meaning speak no evil, hear no evil, see no evil, <laughs> Well, I think this thing turned out really cool looking, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching me make it. If you did, please let me know what you think in the comments, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe for future videos. As usual, I'll have affiliate links in the description for things that I've used in the video, as well as things I would recommend. I'll also add a link to where you can download the model in case you want to print one for yourself. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.